Uh, Matt, Matt Cleaner, big fight for you on uh, June the 27th, the defence of your British middleweight title. What are your thoughts on the uh, on the fight? I know there's no opponent yet. Yeah, well, it's kind of been narrowed down that it might be over probably Stephen Bendel or Matthew Thurwell. I think either fight's uh, a decent fight. I think uh, you know Bendel's had a bit of form. He uh, beat Paul Smith. You know, supposedly a bad decision. I didn't see the fight, but you know, even to have had a competitive ten round with Paul, you know, it's a good bit of form. And then he yeah, obviously had a tough ten rounder with Darren McDermott and uh, Darren Buck stopped on cuts in seven. You know, I feel that I could, uh, you know, do a lot better than that. And I think that'd be a little statement. You know, I feel I'm near. To be honest, I feel I'm a level above all the other fighters in the middleweight division in Britain. Um, Probably the only really one out there that could probably give me a decent test to be Darren Barker, but I think it'd be too strong and too hard, and for him, hit too hard. But uh, but you know, that, 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 either way, or, or it's Matthew Thurwell, that, that's a good fight too, because you know we we, we were uh, friends when we were amateurs. I was the I won the ABAs in 2001 at welterweight. He won it at light middle. You know, we sparred together quite a bit down at Crystal Palace as amateurs, and uh, obviously when I turned pro with Frank, he turned pro with McKenna C. Our uh, friendship kind of drifted, but uh, no, that's another good fight. I think he'd, he hasn't been on top form lately, but I think he'd raise his game for me. I think there'd be a lot of pride at stake, and uh, so I think it'd be a good fight either way. And you, you sort of mentioned it in the press conference, you've been a pro now for, for quite a long time. Yeah. And it's almost been a, a long apprenticeship, but you, you feel ready now to sort of seize the day. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's a... Um, a lot of great Mexican fighters have been pro a long time before they really hit the, top, the big time. I'm, you know, for just for an example, Jose Luis Castillo, he was uh, for years in the shadows of uh, Julio Cesar Chavez as a, as a sparring partner, and no one ever thought he'd, he'd get past that level. But you know, he, but once his time came, he turned into a you know a hell of a champion himself. You know, I feel the same same about with me. You know, I've I've, uh, I've had my problems. I've had a bit of instability with promoters, instability with trainers. I've had hand trouble. Uh, I've had, you know, I've, I've been, I've fought the wrong way a few times, and um, you know, I just think it's all maturity, and it, it, it's, it's all learning, it's all a learning curve, and I think, uh, you know, I, don't, I, I retain the confidence in undefeated fights because I don't actually feel I've lost to a better fighter. You know, when I fought Facey, firstly I thought I won the fight, but looking back, it's probably, you know, it probably wasn't the best match for me at the time. I was very young, you know, I was doing a ten round, I was only 20 years old, I wasn't very experienced, hadn't had much rounds under my belt, you know, and uh, like I said, I still thought I won the fight. Um, you know, Jamie beat me. He fought a really smart fight in the night. You know, but I, I, I was dead at the weight, and uh, and I fought the wrong fight. He fought the right fight. A better man won in the night. But uh, you know, Jamie's no more. He's, he's European champion. He's defended his title successfully. And uh, you know, I've always believed that I'm, I'm, I'm destined to be a world champion. I feel that I had that, that pedigree as an amateur, and, and you know, I'm even more suited to the pros. It's just about getting it right, and it's about timing. Like I said earlier, you know, Naz was. World champion at 21, but then he was finished at, at 27. You know, Will Fredo Benita at 24. Um, you know, then you have guys like Steve Collins uh, and fighters like that that don't really come good until they're 30. So it's all about you know, each to their own, and, and everything everything happens for different people at different times. You know, I feel that you know I'm fairly seasoned now. I'm, I'm knowledgeable about professional boxing, about the championship distance, pacing myself. You know how to make the weight, how to train. You know uh, I found my style as well. Now I think what for years I was under Billy Graham I was probably fighting a bit gung ho, probably fighting a bit too much like Ricky Hatton, which is great for Ricky Hatton. But, but you know we, we, we have different attributes, different uh, strong points, different weaknesses. And uh, you know since leaving the first few, fight, few fights I had since I left there. Uh, uh, Billy Graham. I think I was trying to overcompensate. I was trying to box too much. You know, I'm a box fighter. That's my style. You know, I, I have got a good jab, but I've also punched well to the body, and I'm physically strong. So I don't want to, I don't want to overcompensate and lose what I've got. But uh, it's took a bit of over overcompensating to find to, to find the middle ground. And I think, uh, you know, my, my last fight was my first fight under Joe Gallagher. But he knew me as an amateur, and I think I just, I think, I, you know, I fought a really good fight in the night, and uh, training went well. And I, and I think style-wise, I've, I've found myself now. There was a suggestion today that if you do come through on the, on June the 27th, there might be a world title fight later in the year. Yeah, well, I hope so because you know Kelly Pavlik and Arthur Abram, they're both very good fighters, but I think you know both are beatable. I don't think either are Floyd Mayweather's. You know, there's a uh, Pavlik's very strong, very big for the weight, tall, big puncher, good chin. But you know, I think if you if you're smart and you box, you know, you use angles and you're clever and you've got a good jab. And you can sit in the pocket as well. Then I think you can. Uh, I think you can beat him. You know, I think he, he, it's not an easy fight by any stretch of the imagination. And you, you, you'd struggle to find anyone that would say that I'd beat him now, and, and rightly so because I'm, I'm form. You know, he, he's the man. But I think by the time that fight happens, you know, if I can have, if I can step up step up a level each time I fight, I think it's, you know, come Christmas time or this time next year, I'll be ready for him. Great. Matt McLean, thank you very much. Cheers.